Hello everyone, welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky and the surrounding area. Today, we're talking about Mary Elliott Flannery, the first woman elected to serve as a state representative in Kentucky. That fact is widely known in our state. What isn't known and is rarely mentioned, however, is the role that Pikeville played in her life and career and the impact she had on us. Mary Elliott Flannery was born in the spring of 1867 in Elliott County to one of the oldest and most prominent families in Kentucky. Her great-great-grandfather, Colonel Richard Elliott, was born at sea on the voyage to America in 1736 and then, 45 years later, led a regiment of Virginia militia during George Washington's victory at Yorktown. Her parents, Benjamin and Nancy, raised her alongside 10 siblings on the Elliott family farm near Sandy Hook. She attended what is today the University of Charleston in West Virginia, then graduated from what is today the University of Kentucky with a degree in education. She married William Harvey Flannery, who was from another politically connected family in Elliott County in 1893. She began teaching in Elliott and Carter counties. Shortly thereafter, they moved on to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Harvey, as he was called, graduated from the University of Michigan Law School in 1895. They soon moved back to Kentucky and settled in Pikeville, where Harvey spent years working for John C. C. Mayo's Northern Coal and Coke Company. Mary taught at the local common school. This was around the same time Miss Flannery began her career in journalism. Two obituaries written by her appeared in the Big Sandy News in late 1903. One of those was a beautiful tribute to the young mother of the subjects of two of our earlier videos, Bessie Riddle Arnold and John Paul Riddle. From then until 1926, she worked as a columnist for the Ashland Daily Independent. Her weekly column, Impressions of Kentucky's Legislature, promoted social change, advocated for women's rights, and commented on state and local politics. She wrote about the people of the Big Sandy Valley. In addition to her work on women's suffrage through the Kentucky Equal Rights Association, she was active in several women's organizations such as the Daughters of the Revolution, the General Foundation of Women's Clubs, and the Eastern Stars. The social prominence of Mary and Harvey Flannery makes her role in helping to elevate a special talent seem even more remarkable. A young poet named Effie Waller-Smith was living in the area while the Flannerys resided in Pikeville. In David Deskin's History of Pike County, he notes that Miss Flannery and Miss Smith became very close friends, despite social conventions of the time. He speculates that Mary must have quickly realized the literary talent Effie possessed and that she would have also recognized the long odds against success that Smith faced. As it is to be expected from someone like Mary Elliott Flannery, she met this challenge head on. She marshaled a group of prominent citizens and they financed the 1904 publication of Smith's first volume of poetry, Songs of the Months. Flannery herself wrote the introduction to that volume, noting, in Miss Waller's verse, there is simply beautiful lyrical quality by which Keats and Burns charm and win all hearts. Miss Flannery also notes that her family, the Elliots, had fought for the Confederacy during the Civil War while Miss Smith's parents had been enslaved. She expresses hope that time can teach those who sided with the Confederates the error of their ways. 
The Flannerys moved back to Catlettsburg in 1912. During their 17 years living in Pikeville, they had raised five children and another daughter, Sue, had died at only three. They visited Pikeville frequently and kept their home on the corner of Scott Avenue and 3rd Street until 1919. The home is no longer there, but the little white church next door still stands today. It was also in 1919 when Congress passed a constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote. The states quickly began to ratify, with Kentucky voting to do so in January of 1920. Ratification was completed with Tennessee's vote on August 18th of that year. According to interviews she gave at the time, Boyd County's Democratic Party selected her to run for state representative in 1921 over her objections. Boyd County was predominantly Republican at the time. Dan Voss had won the 1919 race by about 1,400 votes. However, Miss Flannery was able to defeat him by 250 votes becoming not only the first woman to serve in the Kentucky State Legislature, but also the first woman to serve in any state legislature south of the Mason-Dixon line. Her election was reported in newspapers across the country. Miss Flannery seemed unfazed, saying, I'm sure after a few days' acquaintance, I'll feel perfectly at home with my colleagues. There were a few changes in procedure that came about due to the newness of having a female representative in the Capitol. Previously, the chair in congressional meetings would recognize the gentleman from such and such, but this was changed to the representative from so and so. Then there was the cloakroom. The custom of the day dictated separate cloakrooms for men and women, and there had only been a need for one for the gentleman. Miss Flannery is reported to have said to the young page at the door, Well, I am one of the boys, so I'll just take a peg in there, before walking past him to hang up her hat and coat. She had gone to Frankfurt intent on making a difference. Her selection as a candidate had largely hinged on her outspoken support for women's issues and on her experience in education. She set to work bringing about what she said, the quote, good people back home needed, hard roads and plenty of them, good schools and more of them, and a real Eastern normal school. Normal schools were colleges intended to train teachers. Miss Flannery initially tried to bring such a school to the Big Sandy Valley. In the end, the legislation she introduced created Moorhead State University. She also helped to reform marriage and divorce laws, to reform education, and to pass laws in Kentucky providing funding for maternity and child care. Rather than run for re-election to the House, she then decided to run for Secretary of State. She traveled the state campaigning and ran political ads in the form of letters to the voters in several newspapers. Although she didn't win that race, she was very competitive, and one of her opponents, Emma Guy Cromwell, did win, becoming the first woman in Kentucky to win a statewide race. Miss Flannery attended the Democratic National Convention in 1924, and in the same year, she was recognized by the Kentucky Historical Society as Kentucky's most prominent female. She ran for another term as state representative in 1925, but lost to Republican Otto Garten by a close margin. By this time, her husband had become a police judge in Catlettsburg. He is said to have taken a hard line on enforcing Prohibition era liquor violations. Just two months prior to her election loss, an explosion rocked the Flannery home in the middle of the night. It was a strong enough blast to knock some of the occupants from their beds, but no one was seriously harmed. 
It was reported at the time that the police suspected the attackers had targeted Judge Flannery due to his liquor-related court decisions. It stands to reason then that these decisions may have cost his wife some unknown number of votes. Mary Elliot Flannery passed away in 1933, apparently of a stroke. In 1963, the Kentucky General Assembly placed a bronze plaque on seat number 40, the seat she used to honor her service to the Commonwealth. Returning to Pike County for just a moment, we've noted in our video on Bessie Riddle Arnold that Pike County became known for the success its women have had in local politics and how that success has continued, essentially unbroken, to this day. We don't think it's a coincidence that such a powerful advocate and role model for women made her home in Pikeville for nearly 20 years. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you have any family stories about Miss Flannery's time in Pikeville, we'd love to hear them. Please comment on the video or email us at tourism at pikevilleky.gov.